Hello everyone. This is Dr. Vignesh, critical care consultant from Apollo Hospital, Chennai. I am going to talk about catheter-associated urinary tract infection or CORTI. I am going to discuss on pathophysiology, diagnosis and treatment of CORTI. I will also elaborate on CORTI prevention strategies including catheter care bundles. We are concerned about CORTI because it is the most common healthcare associated infection. It contributes to 40% of all healthcare associated infections and contributes to 50% of all nosocomial bacteremias. It has an impact on the outcome of patient by increasing the morbidity and mortality. It also has an high burden on the healthcare system by increasing the length of stay of patient in ICU and also increasing the overall cost of the treatment. In underwent use of unnecessary antibiotics for CORTI results in emergence of large reservoir of multidrug resistant organisms. How CORTI occurs? CORTI occurs by the entry of organism into the urinary tract through the catheter. This can happen either extraluminally, that is around the catheter, or intraluminally, that is through the lumen of the catheters. Extraluminal infections are quite common and it accounts for two-thirds of the infections. It is mainly due to the endogenous organisms which are present in the perineal regions, including rectum, vagina, and the pelvis. It occurs during the insertion of the catheter or later due to the capillary action. Intraluminal infections are due to the exogenous organisms and occurs due to the contamination of the catheters from the healthcare workers. The most common organism causing CORTI are the gram-active bacteria E. coli. The other gram-active bacteria associated with CORTI are Pseudomonas and Klebsiella. Candida and Enterococcus also contribute to significant number of CORTI infections. So, how to diagnose CORTI? CORTI can be diagnosed if the patients fulfill all the following criteria. One, the presence of a catheters. Patients should have or add a catheter within 48 hours of onset of symptom. The catheter may be a suprapapic or an indwelling periurethral catheter. Intermittent catheterization or external catheters can also be accounted for CORTI diagnosis. Number two, bacteria. So, patients should have a significant bacteria. That means the patient's urine culture should have a growth of one or more than one uropathogenic organisms and the culture growth should have a colony count of more than 10 to the power of 3. Number three, presence of urinary signs, infection signs and symptoms. Patients should have any of the symptoms like fever, rigors, altered mental status, lethargy, flank pain, costovertebral tenderness, suprapubic or pelvic tenderness, hematuria or dysuria. Number four, there should not be any other source of infection which could explain the presentations. So if the patient fulfill all the criteria, then they are diagnosed to have a CORTI. On the contrary, if a patient have a catheter and has a significant bacteria without signs and symptoms of urinary tract infection, then they are diagnosed to have a asymptomatic bacteria. Management of CORTI Like any other sepsis, CORTI also needs a prompt source control. In CORTI, the source of infection is the catheter. So, catheter has to be removed or replaced promptly. The second aspect of management is taking appropriate sample. The sample, that is the urine specimen, can be collected from the mid void, midstream voided specimen or it can also be collected from a replaced new catheter. The sample can also be collected from the collection port of the drainage system. The main aspect of management is the antibiotic therapy. The antibiotic therapy should be appropriate and is to be of adequate durations. The ideal duration of treatment is for 7 days. However, if patient is having a complicated UTA, or the response to the treatment is poor, then it can be extended to 14 days. So, prevention is always better than cure. CORTI prevention strategies should involve the entire course of catheterization process, starting from insertion of the catheters to catheter care while the patient is being catheterized, and it should extend till the catheter is removed or replaced. The most effective strategy to prevent CORTI is avoiding catheters. So, catheterization should be reserved only for appropriate indications. Some of these indications include urinary retention or obstructions. In patients' wounds, urine output monitoring is essential. Patients having sacral or perineal wounds to aid in healing of the wounds. And in case of prolonged immunizations or as a comfort measures in patients undergoing end-of-life issues. It can be used perioperatively in patients undergoing urological procedures or in patients where the surgery duration is prolonged or in patients where the surgeries in which urine output monitoring is essential or in surgeries where large volume sheets of fluid is anticipated. While inserting catheters, strict aseptic precautions should be followed. It includes thorough antigen and use of sterile gloves, sponges, drapes, antiseptic and sterile solutions and single-use lubricant jewelries. Once catheters are placed, it should be secured properly. The other strategy for prevention of CORTI is use of closed drainage system. It involves use of systems with pre-connected sealed 
catheter tube junctions. These systems, the continuity should be maintained throughout. If there is any break in the continuity of these closed systems, it should be promptly changed. Also, the urine sample should be collected from the collection port and it should be done under full aseptic precautions. Urine stasis favors growth of bacteria and then it favors infection. So it is essential to maintain an unobstructed urine flow. It can be ensured by keeping the catheter and collecting tube kink free and by keeping the collection bag below the catheters or below the bladder all the times. It is also essential to keep the bag empty. While emptying the bag, we have to make sure that we don't contaminate the spigot. So duration of catheter is one of the important risk factors for CORTI. So we have to ensure that we remove the catheters early. Perioperative catheters should be removed within 24 hours of catheterizations. And we should also set reminders to remove the catheters early. Compared to indwelling catheters, alternate catheterization strategies like intermittent catheterization or external drainage like condom catheters carries low risk of infection. So we can use these strategies in appropriate patients. For example, intermittent catheterization can be used in patients with neurogenic bladder or post-operative urine retentions. We can use the aid of bladder ultrasound while using intermittent catheterizations. External catheterization or the condom catheters can be used in cooperative male patients without obstructions or retention. In centers where the CORTI rates are high, despite following CORTI prevention strategies and with full compliance of the CORTI protocols, antibiotic impregnated catheters can be useful in reducing the rates of CORTI. However, routine use of antibiotic impregnated catheters in all the patients is not found to be useful. While we understand CORTI and CORTI prevention strategy, it is also essential to know the misconceptions around CORTI prevention strategies. There are lots of interventions which were suggested and later found not to be useful. These interventions include use of complex drainage system, changing the catheters or drainage back at frequent intervals, using antibiotic prophylaxis during insertion or during the maintenance of catheters, cleaning the periurethral site with antibiotic solutions, bladder irrigation with antimicrobials, or using antibiotics into the drainage bags. All these interventions were not found to be useful. And routinely screening all the patients for insulin-tomatic bacteria are also not found to be useful. So all these interventions are not found to be useful and should be avoided. To summarize, CART is one of the most common healthcare-associated infection, which has a huge impact in the healthcare system. The diagnosis of CORTI is made by the presence of significant bacteria in asymptomatic catheterized patients. Management of CORTI involves prompt removal of catheters and appropriate antibiotic therapy. The effective CORTI prevention strategies include reduction in the duration of catheterizations, following strict aseptic precautions while inserting the catheters, and maintaining a clean, unobstructed, closed drainage systems. Intermittent catheterization and external catheters can also be used to reduce the incidence of CORTI. I have just briefly covered about CORTI and its creep prevention strategies. Hope you have all understood. Thank you.